Welcome to Health and Living with me, T. Xiao Ik. In this second episode of our three-part mini-series, consultant orthopedic surgeon Dr. Harjit Singh is back to look at the process of recovering from a knee injury. And we will also be checking in with Jimmy, who is a knee surgery patient, a pretty recent knee surgery patient, on how his recovery process is going, the physical rehabilitation that he's been going through, and where he is on the road to returning to the futsal court. And um, I just want to very quickly recap our first part where um, we also, uh, you know, all three of us spoke together. And at that time, Jimmy uh, was just three weeks post-surgery uh, and uh, just a refresher on his injury. Um, Jimmy had injured his knee playing futsal um, August of last year uh, and it was an ACL uh, injury. And, uh, you know, in our last show, which uh, you can download the podcast um, to uh, to get more of that context about uh, these kinds of injuries. Um, but just very briefly as well, Dr. Hajit uh, explained that 70% of ligament and meniscus injuries at the knee occur with non-contact injuries. And, you know, at that point, um, Jimmy, I remember you describing that um, you had actually just been pivoting and then your knee gave way and there was that popping sound of the ACL uh, um, uh, tearing. So we covered um, sort of that process of going to see your doctor uh, deciding on surgery and how you went through that surgery and uh, uh, what it was like um, immediately post-surgery. And today we want to talk about sort of the uh, the medium-term look at uh, what that rehab process looks like. Um, so now Jimmy would be seven weeks post-surgery. Am I right, Jimmy? Yeah, seven weeks. Yeah. And so Dr. Hajit, on the previous show, um, you know, when we talked Jimmy was two weeks into recovering from his surgery. Uh, very, very uh, immediate uh, uh, term look. But now four weeks later at this stage uh, after his, his surgery, and yeah, so we're talking about uh, seven weeks post, what level of mobility would patients have at this point? Yeah, most of the time compared to uh, how they were when initially uh, seen, they will be much, much better uh, the supports such as the crutches or the brace uh, would be weaned off uh, by now. Uh, probably the crutches would be totally removed and uh, he would be uh, moving about uh, only with the brace, probably also uh, at home, uh, depending on how well he's doing, they may allow him to remove the brace uh, completely. But this is... Um, very, very uh, dependent on the uh, progress that he has shown over the past four weeks, uh, the discipline at which he has uh, done his rehab at, and uh, how the muscles are behaving to all that. So it's actually not an a la carte procedure and a la carte uh, structure of progression, but it also depends on how Jimmy actually progresses and the kind of surgery that was done. But so, definitely two weeks down the line, two weeks from two weeks, and now he's almost six to seven weeks, he would be doing much, much better and would be seeing that there's light at the end of the tunnel, I guess. Yeah. And, and so, um, Jimmy, I know you are quite an overachiever. So um, what is your progress? Um, what uh, kind of mobility do you have now? What has become easier for you to do and what is still difficult? Well, uh, I pretty much move around without the crutches uh, now. And it's been like that for quite a few weeks. Uh, not that there's anywhere to go with M MCO. So uh, it's mostly uh, at home and going to my physiotherapist. I mean, apart from doing like strenuous uh, exercise, uh, I, I think I'm, I'm okay. I'm, I'm okay to walk and, and, and do a bit of grocery shopping just to get out of the house. Apart from sports, like, I don't think that's uh, anything that I wouldn't do. I, I, I would go for a walk around. Uh, if it's a familiar, familiar place, then at, at home and in the physiotherapy areas, uh, then I, I probably don't use the, uh, the brace. But uh, I'm quite confident at flat areas. Okay. And um, at what level are you pushing yourself in terms of uh, that range of activity you're doing? 
Well, I, I actually leave it a lot to the physiotherapist. I, like you say, you know, I, I would be quite gung-ho and, and I would go and uh, carry stuff and move stuff around uh, the house, you know, if, if my wife's not looking. But um, I, I leave it to the physiotherapist to to ask me, you know, is, is this heavy? You know, can you do more? Can you do more reps? You know, I, 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 I don't want to push it too hard and, and then go back to week one. So uh, I'm, I'm quite careful uh, that way. But I, I think I know kind of my limits, so I don't carry heavy things. I think pivoting is the, the, the main, the key word not to do. Okay. Dr. Haji, you want to explain that a little bit? Why would pivoting be, you know, a, a problem? So the thing is, now we are uh, at seven weeks and uh, Jimmy has turned out to be the uh, less gung-ho model patient. The key is that um, a lot of times the treating doctor sees, sees him probably once after two weeks and then the second time after four weeks. And uh, a lot of the intervals are then handled by the physiotherapist. And the interaction between the physiotherapist and, and, and the patient is extremely close and uh, it allows for slight changes in the rehab process to be assessed and uh, problems picked up and identified immediately. I think the idea is that after surgery, we would want the muscle envelope around the knee to become less angry, less sore, and slowly regain function. Uh, the first thing that we would want is a return of the range of motion of the knee. So we try to get the knee being able to be extended fully. That means keep uh, being able to get it straight as fast as we can. And uh, the bending capability, we try to obtain about 90 to 120 degrees after about four weeks. And after about six weeks, we try to get full range of motion comparable to the other knee. The reason for that is that if you lose uh, your ability to extend the knee, that means getting it straight just like the other side, differences up to maybe about two to three degrees, you already would possibly walk with a limb and uh, it would be difficult to progress you through rehab further because your walking gait would be different. There will be muscle inhibition, the quadriceps, muscle control, and then and then you just get stuck at one point. Similarly, if we are unable to achieve full bending as, as fast as we should uh, within the limits of uh, recovery, then you also have a set of problems. So we know that the goals are such and we try to push patients like Jimmy through it. And in this, the physiotherapist and the rehab personnel is actually key. You know, there's very close contact. Me as the treating surgeons, we, we tend to see the patients at, at periodic intervals. And usually I use these uh, intervals to actually give a broader picture and pick out any problems that need uh, attention or adjustment. But the physiotherapist is the key. So, um Jimmy, you said that you're mostly off the uh, crutches right now. How did you come to that, uh, you know, decision as well? Is that something you work together with your physio to decide, and based on what kinds of parameters? Well, uh, I see my physiotherapist quite often. Uh, it's three times a week, um, so you know we get a lot of feedback while doing these uh, ther therapies, uh, sessions, from two crutches to single crutches. And uh, I, I think my, my, my knee had recovered pretty well and a lot of strength has come back in that area. Um, I think like Dr. Haji said, you know, straightening uh, the leg was one of the key things to, to walk properly uh, without a limp. Um, I think it was very obvious, like just only recently, which was... Uh, two days ago, it was so natural that I forgot to wear my brace to go to my physiotherapy, you know. Uh, I didn't feel like there was a limb and it, I, I noticed that. So, um, but I had already been off the crutches uh, for three weeks 
already. It came to a point where I had to ask my doctor, you know, during one of our appointments, uh, do you want me to come with the crutches just to show you, you know, so that you, 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 you feel confident I'm using the crutches, or you want me to walk in, just show you my crutches? So, so it was, it was that, that I was walking uh, confidently uh, without pain, uh, and I feel that the knee was strong strong enough to be able to take uh, more than my own weight As, and, and that was quite key la, to, you know doing the leg presses in in the in the therapy sessions uh, i it it could take close to double my weight so so there was a fair point to be able to walk without crutches mm. dr hajin are there common mistakes that some people make during this point to phase out the assistive devices um yeah, I think I think that's a that's a very interesting uh, question, and there's a twist to this. Each patient is different. Each surgery is different. Each two similar surgeries are never done exactly the same way by two different surgeons. So ultimately, it would always depend on uh, a standard way of doing things with certain targets and um, tweaking them based on the response to these targets. So if you have a very well-conditioned athletic patient or person having an injury, obviously uh, the way they progress through rehab, if they are made to understand all the nuances of, of, of uh, the steps, they would pro progress through it faster and smoother within limits. So if, if you have a friend who says that, hey, I, I took off my crutches at four weeks and now you are at your fourth week and your surgeon is saying, you know what, we did repair your meniscus and once I repair the meniscus, I would keep you on crutches for a longer period of time to ensure healing. Uh, I mean, if you don't really get that and that wasn't conveyed to you from the word go, you get a bit disheartened and you get a bit down or you get a bit pissed off because you feel that things are not right. So I think there are a lot of differences Um and the mistake is that everybody thinks that he's just like the other person going through the surgery. So the we need to understand that there's an individual element to it. All right. So we'll go for a quick break. Uh, I'm speaking to Dr. Hajit Singh, consultant orthopedic surgeon, and Jimmy, a recent knee surgery patient. We're discussing uh, recovering from a knee injury. This is the second episode of a three-part mini-series. We'll be right back. BFM 89.9. Welcome back to Health and Living with me, T. Shao Ik, and my guests, consultant orthopedic surgeon Dr. Hajit Singh and Jimmy, a knee surgery patient. We're discussing um, the therapy part uh, of the recovery process um, following a knee injury, following uh, what may typically be a, a surgical procedure um, for a knee injury, um, you know, where uh, ACL tears are, are very, very common. Uh, a type of injury uh, involving the knee joint. Um, just a brief recap, Jimmy is now about seven weeks post-surgery. He's mostly off um, his crutches. Um, he is fairly comfortable without them, especially in familiar uh, places on flat surfaces. Um, going for physiotherapy three times a week, Jimmy, you said. Do you want to quickly just run through what exactly you do in these physiotherapy sessions? Um, what kinds of exercise um, is the therapist doing with you and what's the aim of it? Well, I believe uh, the main uh, thing is uh, muscle activation. My leg muscles had uh, shrunk fairly um, after the, the operation. And so we had to kind of wake them up connect them and tell them, you know, you got to do all sorts of things to, to, to get going. Um, so we do a lot of uh, activation uh, exercises from using bands or just uh, basic balancing, not weight bearing. And we also use uh, the EMS and TENS uh, machine just to uh, stimulate the, the muscles uh, as well. I think a step-by-step -step would be when you know, I'm there three times a week, so they're evaluating me every day and there's improvement and then they push me a little bit more. Uh, you know, when I was be, when I was able to kind of stand uh, by, by myself, uh, it was a lot of balancing uh, on, 
you know exercises on on the week on my own weight. I think these little uh, movements help give me that confidence as as well. I I you know I'm on the balancing board and and I feel that hey you know hey, this my my left leg is doing better than my right leg actually, and which right, was explained to me that should be the case because that is my standing leg. You know when I play football, I'm a right footer and my injury is on the left, so so I should be doing better on my on my left. So so and that's the case and that kind of. Uh, the reinforcement from the therapist and looking at what I'm doing uh, so gave me that confidence to to gonna walk without uh, any any support. Dr. Hajit, um, anything you want to add to that? Uh, this this rehab process of the patients working with their physiotherapists. Yeah, I I think um, while we always feel that the surgery and the surgeon is 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 key in this whole package, uh, I think we are only about 30-40% of the story. The 60% is the rehab and the patient with the therapist and the team which is taking care of him otherwise. Uh, surgery is only an event and uh, rehabilitation is, is the marathon. You know, the, the whole process to get him back to sports. Now, uh, what happens over this intermediate period of time is that exercises and rehab concentrates on building uh, muscle endurance up to about two to three months and uh, initially the intensity of exercise is uh, lighter uh, with appropriate less rest in between and as you get your muscle endurance back which means that you can perform light activities without getting too sore then you add on the element of strength and working on to power once you you know go through rehab and you are successfully passing through certain stages and criteria without the knee swelling up without uh, an increased amount of pain and and tightness so i think that requires very close communication and trust you have to actually trust your physio i think that's the key even even for me um i've had this journey you know previously i used to be so micromanaging everything after surgery and then you meet therapists whom you put trust in and they repay your trust with excellent results make you look extremely good and once you trust your therapist, it's three quarter of the battle won. All you need to do is put the graph and fix the mechanical problem in the knee correctly. Everything else, you get a good patient, you get a good therapist. Obviously, Jimmy has an excellent therapist uh, and, and you, you get good results. Anything particularly difficult about therapy? Jimmy, um, any points you feel like slacking off, giving up? Um, actually, I was quite like looking forward to getting the surgery and going through this therapy. I had a lot of time to think about it, you know, and I was quite positive about where I want to be when I fully recover. Uh, so I'm I'm quite geared towards like doing my view the three times a week, you know, and uh, so much so that I like you know, okay, I'll. I'll, I'll pay this package in advance. I'll, I'll pay six months in advance and, and, you know, lock it down. So I'll come, in, you know, instead of, you know, I'll, uh, I'll pay, you know, I'll do a monthly thing and then three months off, I'll slack off. So here, here, here I am, you know, six months package and uh, we, we are seven weeks in uh, and uh, I'm, I'm still going, looking forward, you know, to seeing them. It, it, we've become family uh, as, as well, meeting them, you know, three times a week. So there's no, no... Uh, challenge to me and especially it's MCO it's good to get out of the house as well absolutely <laughs> so, so, yeah. so great timing actually you're a model patient uh, Jimmy <laughs> um, Dr. Hajit are there patients unlike Jimmy who don't have that kind I mean I mean you know every patient is different you know um, everyone has their own issues and challenges um, maybe a word of caution about you know what happens if they are not consistent with rehab. What would happen, and how can you have that conversation with them to encourage them to stick to it? Okay, um, 
the way I look at it, uh, this is like an ideal scenario. It's MCO, Jimmy can work from home, he's got the means to pay for good rehab, but not all the patients have that. A lot of times, cost is a big issue in rehab. There are many other scenarios where after about a month, you need to get back to going to work. And, uh, you know, although you may be office-based, but that, you know, takes off your time from being able to put rehab uh, as the first thing all the time. So the conversations are had way before we uh, embark on surgery. So I actually explain to them how important rehab is. And I do tell them that the ideal scenario is to get them back to sports within about 10 months. I tell them that if we drag rehab longer, the problems of uh, stiffness of the knee, um, losing range of motion, some amount of tightness and pain may curtail the ability to return to sports at as good a level as they could reach. And they do share with me the uh, problems with uh, plugging in rehab with work going on on the site. So most of the time, the physio is also keyed in on this and they create home-based exercises, not the ideal scenario, but they work something around it. So they do have maybe a session at the physio center. And in between, there are certain exercises that they need to do. And they are told that if you reach and do these exercises appropriately, um, you tend to be able to progress on. If not, you're stuck at that level. So patients tend to accept that. Now, there's the gung-ho patient, which I think Jimmy is, and probably the physio is controlling him a little bit tightly. Uh, there is something called over-physio or <laughs> overdoing things. Now, when you overdo things, you actually stress out the joint, which is not able to accept the amount of rehab and work that you're putting on it. And it reacts by getting stiff and sometimes swelling up. Now, this is not good because it encourages the formation of scar tissue, which is going to retard your rehab. So, you know, on one side, we have patients who do less rehab and we need to communicate that that's a no-no and how we get around it. And then we have the ones who are overdoing it and uh, we need to work on those two. So it's actually an um, ideal scenario is what Jimmy has explained. You know, I can happily go for my rehab. I look forward to it. I think everybody looks forward to rehab when everything is going well. The way we deal with things when um, things don't go right actually allows the patient's uh, confidence to not waver in our abilities and our, uh, you know, care for them. And then we bring them back to the path. Lah. It's almost a religion. <laughs> <laughs> um, are there options for people who can't afford rehab? Okay, yeah. So the thing is, the initial part of, of rehab is extremely important to be guided uh, closely because uh, there's a lot of use of machines and it is initially very uncomfortable to carry out exercises on your own. Uh, of course, thereafter, uh, if you guide them uh, appropriately, and there are home-based exercises, you, you can actually uh, use uh, you know, simple slides and all, which you, you, you can do at home. But it's actually also dependent on the uh, imag imaginity of the physiotherapist. But yes, there are scenarios after the first two or three weeks that we can shift a lot of rehab to home-based exercises. Mm. And uh, just one more point, uh, to complement the rehab, Dr. Hajit, are there certain sports, non-weight-bearing ones that patients can do? Uh, swimming, for example? Yeah, so um, it all de is dependent on how the patient is progressing. I think a lot of them are allowed cycling very early. Swimming is another good exercise. 
but we have to understand you can't have you have to have very good control of the operated limb as you go into the pool you know because getting out of the pool is you're getting out of a sur slippery surface so all you know the smaller things once you're in the water it's fine you know there's the buoyancy of water it helps you uh it's said that it's kinder to do exercises in water but the getting in and out is something that you need to work on yeah that's a very good point um pain jimmy in terms of pain um walk us through uh since we last spoke and um you know sort of like how would you rank it now how has it changed um actually even since we last spoke um at week three um i've not had pain um the pain that i had was actually the initial that we we whether we spoke about it or not, was at my lower shin and not at the point of uh, surgery. Uh, that was due to something else. Um, but I've not had pain at all, actually. Uh, it's more tightness, you know, because it's swelling, um, because they use my hamstring as the graft. So it, it's not really pain. I, I didn't feel any um, sharp pains that I had to stop uh, doing a anything at, at, at all. It's it's mainly because of swelling and I'm trying to bend. Uh, and these things usually happen at the physiotherapist, uh, you know, when they're making me do certain movements or exercises just to test my mobility and range. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, if I'm at home, basically there's, there's no pain because I, I, don't, I don't push any, you know, I don't push myself. Um, Dr. Hajit, on average, what is the experience for patients at this point in terms of pain? Uh, arthroscopic surgeries uh, are friendly surgeries. There's a lot done in the knee, but the the uh, access to the areas at which we operate on uh, is is not as invasive as uh, open surgery. That's that's a fact, and uh, it tends to be less painful. Now. Having uh, said that, as we go on through rehab, any change in the load or the kind of exercise that we put the patient through, uh, we are always mindful of pain because pain then tells us two things. Either the knee is not ready for that upgrade in the exercise or the exercise is being done wrong. So there's two parts. So we use uh, a measure of pain for that. Um, some patients do describe that tightness as pain. And uh, we have to also take everything that they say with a pinch of salt. But generally, the way things are going, um, you know, uh, pain is not a great issue. Now, the problem with this is that if you have younger patients who are very on and gung-ho, uh, they tend to, no pain means they can push themselves further. We, we now know that there is a whole process to the recovery of this ligament. The early uh, part of recovery includes uh, inflammation of the graft and actually the cells within the graft are, being, are dying off and actually uh, deteriorating over the first, four to six weeks. Now, from the sixth week right up to the 12th week, there is proliferation of cells. Now, so during the time where Jimmy is actually saying that I feel good, I feel no pain and I feel strong is the time that the graph is actually at its weakest. The reason why you feel good is that the therapist is very, very aware of this fact and has built up the muscle envelope to support the knee. And after about the third month, we start building you up and the, you know, the graph tends to, the cells tend to proliferate more and more and then they remodel and this is complete after about a year to two years. So functionally, you get good function, but the structure is still healing. It doesn't mean that, you know, I feel good at six weeks means my graph has healed, no such thing. Um, the reason we control the amount of weight bearing when we repair the meniscus in association with a cruciate ligament injury is that we know it takes about six to eight weeks for that repair to heal. You know, very good healing after about four to five months. So 
you know, it, it depends on all these small facets which change the way we look at things. So that's the role of the surgeon. We need to communicate that to our rehab team and they are on the same page so that when things move by and I see my patients after about four weeks once, uh, I know what to expect and anything is different is communicated to me way before. So when they try something and something goes wrong, it's immediately I normally get a call and say, hey, you know what, uh, we did this or uh, put uh, A on this and suddenly something happened. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the, the thing is you don't want to hear that I heard a pop after that, la, you know, then that's a big problem. But otherwise, the communication is key. So you have to have you have to trust your team and you have to communicate with them well. Okay. When you said the pop, uh, my hair stood up. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure um, you know it doesn't happen. Hopefully, it doesn't happen often. But what would that indicate? Okay. Um, a pop after ACL uh, surgery is a re-rupture of your graft. I think that's the most common reason. Uh, not very common if you follow rehab properly and uh, the whole team is on the same page. But things happen. Uh, I've had a patient who tried to step into a pool just to walk in the pool and miss the step in the water, you know, while going, going, going down and, and he heard a pop. So, you know, then that's another whole story for another show. <laughs> Um, but, you know, earlier you said that there are um, milestones in terms of the mobility of the joint. First, you want to be able to get uh, to straighten the knee and then bend it to a certain degree and then full range of motion after about six weeks. Now, what if the patient doesn't achieve these? Um, what, what do you need to consider doing then? Okay, so previously, uh, to simplify things, when I used to explain things to my patients, I used to give them a timeline, time-based, an approximate time-based progression to their rehab. And I was not happy with that. And we now know that it's target-based. That means you need to get, uh, to put it simply, we can use the quadricep strength and it, we, we, we use the normal side as a base and we compare both. You know, so once you reach X amount uh, of strength, then we progress to the next one. And, and so to speak. Now, to answer your question, when we do not reach these targets, then we just extend the period of rehab in that phase to build it up. And sometimes we then rethink the methods at which we are pushing this patient. You know, each patient is different. Maybe we need to tweak not so much at the knee, maybe the exercises at the hip that protect the knee need to be upped. And then uh, we work through, through that. But I think that, that these targets are there for a reason. Sometimes you may not achieve the targets, but all your other parameters are okay. And we move on, but we move on with caution. So then you get uh, closer appointments, closer rehab and, and such. So it's a very fluid uh, procedure and progress. All right. Um, so, Jimmy, um, if we look at the next four weeks thereabouts, which should take you to about 12 weeks post-surgery, um, what what are you looking forward to? Um, what do you have in mind? Well, I mean, I have the opportunity to work with a good therapist. So, I think, uh, you know, they, they, they look at me and guide me and I give them my full trust uh, to, to recover uh, from this. So, you know, psychologically, I'm like, you know, I, I should be doing more uh, weight-bearing stuff, you know. This, this, uh, this thing is, you know, uh, I'm like, you know, I, I, could, I could push more, I could do this. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not there yet, you know, and I, and I don't want to question them. In. So so they say, you know, okay, next week uh, we're going to do more treadmill walking. Because uh, every time in my mind, I'm thinking like, you know, I, sh I should be doing weights, you know. Uh, so so I, I, I leave it to them. And I, I, and I think uh, uh, this is where Dr. Ajit said, you know, that's the stages that you, you go through. Your, your mind wants to do more. 
you know you think you can you know but i don't i don't want to go back to week one so i'm like okay let's uh let's let's just go with it like you know if it's easy it's easy uh i'm i'm, I'm fine as long as i'm uh getting there and I'm not uh, getting injured going, you know, to, to, to week seven and week eight. And, you know, I think uh, in the next four weeks, I, I want to be maybe going back to uh, like simple hiking, walking, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know. I just uh, probably let uh, the therapist and, and my doctor advise me where I should be. Yeah. All right. And Dr. Hajit, any final message um, sort of looking at w- uh, the, the point that patients are right now with rehab and how they can look ahead to, so say, 12 weeks and beyond? Yeah, I, I, I always feel that uh, rehab after surgery is a journey. So if things go good and you follow the path, you, you will ultimately reach where you're supposed to go uh, and the destination will be beautiful. The rehab process is smoothened by good communication between the surgeon and the therapist, but most importantly, uh, very good feedback from the patient because the communication has to be two-way. A lot of times, uh, we have patients who uh, we, are, we ask them, okay, how do you feel with this? Okay, lo. how do you feel with that? All right. I mean, they don't really explain it the way uh, Jimmy does. Uh, I mean, some patients are quieter and some patients are very chatty. So you need to work with them to be able to get the information to serve them best. So I think that uh, it is a journey. It's not an event. Be patient. Continue keeping focus at your end goal. uh, and, And things usually are fine. All right. Thank you so much. I've been speaking to Dr. Hajit Singh, consultant orthopedic surgeon, and Jimmy, a knee surgery patient. And this is the second episode of our three-part mini-series on recovering from a knee injury. You've been listening to Health and Living on The Bigger Picture, BFM 89.9.